Minecraft is one of the greatest games of the 2000s, with its popularity skyrocketing even after a decade. It is loved because of its realistic survival mechanics, such as killing animals to get food, putting raw meat in furnaces, turning a log into planks, building a house, you get the point. We even see realistic structures that mimic real life structures, like desert pyramids, jungle temples, mining shafts, villages, blacksmiths, shipwreck, even civilizations have emeralds as currency. But then, out of nowhere, a creeper comes out and ruins that realistic sensation. Something I couldn't help but notice is a pattern in the game, and how different type of mobs interact with the player. To understand where I'm going with this, let's take a quick overview of the different types of mobs in Minecraft. They all fit in one of three categories. First category is passive mobs. These mobs do not hurt you, even if you provoke them. So stabbing them with a sword will not do anything. Examples of passive mobs are like cows, sheep, pigs, and even villagers. The second category of mobs is neutral mobs. These mobs are very relaxed but will hurt you if you hurt them first. Examples of this would be dolphins, bees, pandas, and wolves. Then we have the last category which is hostile mobs or monsters. These mobs will attack you no matter what and will actually hunt you down. Examples of hostile mobs include spiders, zombies, skeletons, phantoms, creepers, pillagers, slimes, drown, you name it. Did you notice a pattern? If you didn't I'll help you out a little bit. All the passive and neutral mobs are things that are found in real life. To take it a step further, every mob in the game that is found in real life will not purposefully hurt you, whereas the monsters in the game are things of fiction and are violent towards the player. So a common theme here seems to be realism equals good and fiction equals bad. And the further you go into the game, the less realistic the game becomes. Building another portal, going into the nether, getting eyes, finding the stronghold, even the dragon. Now this could obviously just be a game mechanic to make things more interesting for adventurous players, but we're talking about lore here. In a world of super realistic mechanics and behaviors, having monsters just seems weird and out of place. Maybe that's because they don't actually belong here. To dive deeper into this, I'm going to focus on where these mobs are coming from. Let me elaborate. Every natural mob that can be found in real life seems to have an origin. Let me elaborate some more. Each mob has a spawning condition, so they will rarely show up without a specific environment. For lore purposes, we are going to say that mobs are born somewhere. For example, villagers are born in villages, dolphins are born in the ocean, polar bears are born in arctic biomes, pandas are born in jungles, you get the idea. They are born, live, and thrive in specific areas, and only if they are modified do they change these habits. Modified by the player, that is. But where are the monsters born? We just kind of see them throughout the game, scattered everywhere with no clear pattern. Take the zombies for example, their spawn condition is just the dark. They don't come from anywhere and they don't seem to be born. The same goes for spiders, skeletons, and creepers. They have an unspecified origin. Okay, okay, maybe there's a virus, like MatPat said, and that explains the zombies. But zombie villagers exist, which means zombies themselves are completely separate from the villagers. So how can we find out where monsters are born? We actually know some of them. Gas, piglins, striders, zombified piglins, and blazes all seem to be born in the nether. We know this because they don't spawn naturally in the overworld, and they all seem to share the common theme of heat or pigs. I think pig Piglins and zombified piglins have their own separate origin, but that's a theory for another day. This still doesn't explain the insane amount of mobs invading the overworld. Where were these mobs coming from, and where were they born? The answer lies in one of the mobs. The most complex mob in the game. We see nothing else like it. This mob has always been a Minecraft mystery. If you haven't already guessed it, I'm a little concerned. The answer lies in the Enderman. The Endermen are obviously the most complex mob in the game. They're actually the only neutral monster in having its own little category. The Endermen are the only mob other than yourself that can travel and spawn naturally in every single dimension, the overworld, the nether, and the end. The Endermen are so important because they prove that even monsters are born somewhere. The Enderman's origin is the end. It is assumed that way because there are so many of them there. That must be where they are born. It's also in the name. The Enderman having an origin tells us a crucial pattern of the game, that every mob is born somewhere, including monsters. But where? My guess is that most hostile mobs come from another dimension that is leaking into the overworld. What dimension though? The nether? The end? I think a part of it is the nether. 
We see similarities to the nether and the overworld monsters quite a bit. Zombies, zombie pigmen, skeletons, wither skeletons, magma cubes, slimes. My guess is the evil of the nether is slowly leaking into the overworld, and these monsters have just learned to adapt and evolve over time due to their environment. Okay, quick pause. I'm pretty sure MatPat has talked about this before, but I can't actually find the video where he says this. So all credit goes to MatPat unless proven otherwise. Anyways, back to our regularly scheduled program. You can see remnants of ruined portals around your world. That means that a connection has previously been established. Maybe every time a new portal is lit or the player crosses over, a part of the nether crosses over as well. But this doesn't explain everything. There are so many mobs who don't seem to have an explained origin through this theory. Maybe there's a dimension we don't know about that can explain all these other mobs. In my previous video, I talked about the warden protecting a potential portal. This might be where some of the monsters are born and leaking into the overworld. One of the reasons I think so strongly that there is another dimension is because of the guardians. The guardians behave in a way that is so unlike anything else you see in the overworld. MatPat actually talked about a theory of the guardians being robots made by the ancient builders. But if the ancient builders made them, why wouldn't they make more of them? They're so advanced. The only mob remotely similar in design is the iron golem. They both have been created to protect and keep the evil out. But I think this is a theory for another day. If you want me to talk more about what I think the Guardians really are, then like this video and subscribe. And if you have any theories, comment below. You think I'm onto something? Anyways, thanks for watching.